Welcome back. We are ready to start reinforcement learning in continuous spaces. For this, we will need neural networks, which was the last lecture. And I would like to say in the previous lectures on dynamic programming and reinforcement learning, we used Q tables to store the Q values. If you remember, right, they are like a table states are there actions are here and we wrote some numbers if you are at state one uh, action is this and if one value is greater than other one we calculate the optimal actions or optimal policy this works for environments with small and discrete state action spaces and when uh, you know environments becomes larger or continuous, basically, it is impractical to store those uh, Q values in Q tables. So, because state action space is too large, right? Q table will, will, will require a massive storage. And we need a generalization. In continuous environments, it is very inefficient to store Q values for every possible state and action. So to this end, the idea is that um, let's replace Q table with its approximation where we are going to use radial basis function neural networks. How we are going to do is that Q, instead of using this, we are going to use its approximated version having the basis multiplied by the weight. And this basis, also so-called features, will determine basically we are going to have radial basis functions and a bias that we saw from the neural network video. And we are going to choose this, and we are going to I am going to discuss in detail how we are going to choose it. But let's say we choose the basis or the features how we are going to find the theta values, right? If you remember the neural network class we can approximate the function but we need to appropriate to choose the weights all right this brings us neural network training so we need to train data such that this approximated q needs to approximate the optimal policy and this optimal policy is nothing but the bellman equation since we have a q here I am going to denote using this O, Q, O here for the Bellman equation. O stands for the optimal, right? We use this Bellman equation, we used in dynamic programming to find uh, Q iteration, to find the optimal policy. And then we used in, in, you know, in Q learning as well. So it is the central equation. So we would like to train our theta such that we, it, Basically, theta multiplied by this phi basis approximates this Bellman equation, the Q0. Um, a common way is to use a gradient descent approach to train theta. If you are not familiar with it, um, I have a you can go to on my YouTube channel. If you go to uh, regression and control, there, is, there are a couple of videos about gradient descent, a very popular method. You can also use gradient descent with momentum and other approaches. I am going to stick with the most common way, gradient descent. So in gradient descent, we have a cost function that captures a difference between what we would like to achieve and where we are at, so, right? You basically, if you can make this approximately like that, then that's great. Then this can approximate this Bellman equation, Q, Q0 or Q optimal. For this purpose, I am using this cost function to the power of two. And how we are going to choose basically uh, gradient descent in this case, theta equals to basically, right? This is if you remember k plus one equals to theta k plus this. I am just using this notation here. We would like to assign the negative gradient of that um, partial derivative of that cost function with respect to theta. So in order to find this, then I need to take this uh, partial derivative 
For this purpose, I am expanding this. The second line is the expanded version. And then I am finding um, dv, basically derivative of the first term with respect to theta is zero. And the second term, if you take it, you are going to have this term. And the last term, you have this. So to make the long story short, since both terms include this phi, our basis or feature, I am going to take this into the parenthesis and leave it here. So this is our uh, gradient. So now we are going to insert this to here, but remember this has a minus sign. We have another minus sign, minus minus makes it plus. So here we go. This is our way to train the neural networks theta, this parameter. And this, if you wonder about this function, later in the code, we are going to compute the optimal Q using this reward function, this part, plus gamma. The only thing is that we are also going to approximate it here. We are going to, you know, put the next values for the state and the action inside this. So this transpose multiplied by theta. So this is to basically approximate this. So this is how we train neural networks. We are going to see uh, more examples. I'm going to discuss how to select appropriately the basis. Let's move on. So in Q-learning, basically, we were using this Q-learning uh, update law, if you wish, right? In every, for every action and state, we were updating like this. And again, uh, this part was the Bellman equation. With neural Q learning, with Q learning with neural networks, Q values are approximated with this basis multiplied by the theta vector. And look how Q learning compares with neural Q learning. It is similar. Alpha, I forgot to mention, it is again the learning rate for the thetas. Reward is here. This is replaced with this. This is replaced with that. And this is replaced with that. And finally, it is multiplied by the basis. So although I use these transposes here and there, these are all scalars. This is um, with transpose one by S vector. And this is one by uh, S by one vector. So its product becomes um, scalar. All right, so here I mentioned two times, I believe in this video, the selection of phi is crucial. And we are going to choose basically, you know, as a basis, we are going to add a bias and radial basis functions of this form. But there is, there is a specific a way uh, to select it and I am going to introduce you the action separation approach next. We are going to separate the actions from each other this way. Um, let me give you an example. Let's dive into an example so that we can learn this from this example. Of course, what I'm going to discuss is not limited to this example. You are going to learn the main ideas. Action separation. Let's say we are looking at a game with four states here. One, two, three, four. And action is just left or right. If you are here and would like to go right, then you go to third state. Step one, choose a basis that covers the domain of interest. In this case, you need to insert radial basis functions to cover the space between one and four. Why? Because your states are changing between one and four. I usually, if I, if I would like to cover one to four, I usually introduce enough neurons or radial basis functions but i also take you know like margin and i i am i i try to cover if somebody asks me to cover one to four with neural networks i cover zero to five even sometimes minus one to six so i put a margin uh, usually um five ten fifteen percent mar margin is great so you usually put here um S number of neurons. This S shouldn't be get puzzled with this S. This is the, your state. This is like you choose S equals to say 
10 neurons. I just used a bad notation here, but this is just number of neurons here, and this is your bias is there. Um, and uh, we are going to do a, a MATLAB video as well later, but uh, usually you can try, you can put 5, 10, 15 uh, radial basis functions try and in some applications this application is a simple example in some applications you choose hundreds sometimes thousands of radial basis functions so I usually start with five equally distributed you know let's say one two three four five if not sufficient I add more and more to make the area smoothly covered all right so we choose this basis for the states next question how we are going to include actions all right we include actions in a very unique way so mathematically speaking it looks weird like this i will explain this is here vector of ones is the one 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 here is if you haven't so chronicle products um, it is just a specialized product it is easy to understand you can look at from wikipedia this guy pops up here, f of s. Basically, you know, if you, in this case, you have two actions, left and right, this will return you f of s, f of this product. So it is, I guess, better to write it compactly like this, but if you have three actions, let's say left, stop, or right, then it will be f, f of s and f of s it will repeat that function three times you are repeating this function three times let's stick with left and right in this case repeating two times so this indicator is an uh, first of all this is an element wise multiplication then this is an indicator basically um, basis for each action is separated to distinguish between different actions meaning that if, for example, you choose to take action to the left, then this indicator function becomes 1 all the way up 1 and all zeros. And when element y is multiplied with this, it kills the second one, so this becomes 0, and you only have the f associated with the base associated with the left action if you take a right action this becomes zero you have an another f of s here which is associated with the right action this way you have a unique feature or basis set for each action and only the basis corresponding to choosing chosen action is active so this is the action separation again you choose a basis and separate it like this uh, of course, in the MATLAB, you will see the how I code this. It is not hard. It is actually quite uh, straightforward.